Jurassic Park The Game 2011. The game that everyone wishes was a movie, or at least myself. I have been down bad for dinosaurs lately, and that means I have been playing all of these games, hard to find and uh, less desirable to play. The one game that sticks out to my mind the most, though, is this one. I remember when it came out, I watched a man named the Alpha Beaver play the entire thing through. Playing through this game, though, for the first time ever, I didn't pirate it. I found it on a website that you can get this stuff from. I found that it is, in fact, brilliant, although not really a game. There's only one decision in the entire thing that changes anything at all about the outcome, and it's right at the very end of the entire thing. This would have been a much better movie or miniseries. And so that's what we're going to look at today. I'm going to turn this and its story beats into a movie, or at least I'm going to talk about it. Roar! The story is divided into four acts, each directed by different people, which is why they vary in quality. That said, here's the summary so I can talk about the characters. Jurassic Park The Game by Telltale Games is a game that came out in 2011. It's set right after the events of the first Jurassic Park movie. The story kicks off with a mercenary named Nemo Cruz who's trying to retrieve those stolen dinosaur embryos that Dennis Nedry lost. Things don't go as planned, obviously, because dinosaurs. Along the way, we meet Dr. Jerry Harding, who's the park's veterinarian. He was also in the first movie, but they couldn't put a mustache on him because of copyright issues. I know, it's really cool. And his teenage daughter, Jess. They get caught up in the chaos and team up with Nima and a few other characters, including another scientist named Dr. Laura Sorkin and some mercenaries. This game is about their struggle to survive and escape the island and they have to deal with all sorts of challenges, navigating the jungle, dodging dinosaurs, and figuring out who they can trust. Except you don't do any of that, you watch them do it while you play quick time events. Yay, and that's why the game isn't that good. It's just the story that's good. It's honestly a tragedy. Hopefully one that this upcoming Jurassic Park game can rectify. It better. Roar. This particular game has a ton of characters interacting with each other. I have made a handy dandy fun time chart character web to express it all. I'm going to give a brief blowdown on each of the characters. So you have Jerry Harding, he's the park veterinarian. Then you have his daughter Jessie, who's adventurous, but not really. She's super subservient the entire time until they just make up a plot at the end where she likes to smoke. It just plot convenience all around. Then you have Dr. Sorkin, who I hate. Then you have Yoder and Oscar, who were sent to rescue all the other characters from the island. And then you have Nima, who was sent to steal the can. So we have Decaf and the guy in the bottom left hand corner, which his name is Miles. They show up for a very brief amount of time, so they're hardly worth mentioning, but they are a plot device for some other characters. Decaf, the man in the helmet, serves as a foil for Yoder and Oscar. He dies very quickly so not much to talk about. Same with Miles, he brings uh, Nima to the island, so he's the reason she's there, and he too dies very quickly. So, there's a lot going on here, I know. Let me point out the most important relationships. First is Jerry and Jesse. They stick together the whole time, they're pretty much in agreement the whole time. There's one time they have an argument, again, I said it before, plot convenience. Then we have Nima and Oscar. They have some tension throughout the story, especially when they meet and they try to kill each other a few times and they talk about killing each other a few times. It's insinuated but never truly confirmed that they both lived on this island as children. The power duo though is Yoder, the coolest character in the entire game, and Oscar, the actual cool character. They are dogs of war, I guess, together. They've done a lot of things together. It's all insinuated. You don't get any of this except through their dialogue. Billy is a caricature. Even in the first scene that he's introduced, they're all popping like war movie jokes that you would see on a cheap Netflix spin-off of Ryan Reynolds fights the Taliban in East Asia, that sort of thing. Now, I do understand that in the context of this game, they had to get all these characters out very quickly. But in relation to how Nima and Jerry and his daughter were introduced, I feel like they were done a great injustice. These two mercenaries really don't shine until the third act. Nima, halfway through the thing, teams up with Yoder, who decides to go AWOL and help deliver the can for a bunch of money so they can have better lives. And Nima and Jerry have a heart-to-heart -heart where they connect about their daughters. Nima's daughter lives in poverty and is sick, and she's trying to free her from that. Jerry's daughter shoplifts at the local mall. 
Then you have Sorokin, who is a co-worker of Jerry's, who was also on the list of people to be saved by the mercenaries, and gets kind of friendly with Jesse. She's not evil. She's just pretentious and stupid and illogical. I do not like the uh, animal rights activist angle of the Jurassic Park movies, because uh, it almost always leads to some form of eco-terrorism. As much as I hate Sorkin, I gotta give it to the writers or the director who have decided to make this character. She is really well done. You don't get a lot of the mumbo jumbo. She's not a core character. She's a supporting character. She's a good guy who wants to do a lot of good things, but is pushed to a breaking point over her values. Just because she wanted to do a good thing didn't mean she wasn't a bad guy in that moment. Uh, these past Jurassic Park movies have gotten me down, dirty, and a little upset because if you are fighting for the rights of the dinosaurs, you're the good guy. No nothing. Uh, as many humans as you want can die. So long as you support the dinosaurs' rights, you're the good guy. Which I don't think is true. Even if you have good intentions, you can become evil by threatening the lives of people. And that's what this character does. And this show does nothing to sugarcoat her. She was willing to do what she was willing to do, and she paid for it. Uh, in the sort of cosmic karma sort of way. The thing she loves so much is the thing that killed her. The same thing is true for characters like Yoder, whose end is because he grew selfish and no longer wanted to do the job he was sent to do. He no longer wanted to save the people he was sent to save. And Nima, for a moment, was willing to do evil for what she needed to get done. And her ultimate decision at the end of the game is to save Jesse or to be greedy and get this can. Spoiler, if you choose the can, she dies. If you choose Jesse, she lives. That is the only, like, gravitas decision in the whole game. But it does carry this theme of, are you willing to become the monsters you're running from just to get what you want? Or are you going to hold on to your humanity? Which I would call the theme of the game. Except for maybe Jesse and Jerry. They, they really are never given that choice. Rawr! I already think the game would make a great movie, as is. If you just translated it right over, I think it would do just fine. Except, the characters need a bit more depth. At current, almost all of them are some degree of a caricature, which is going to be natural in any form of film or theater. It's just how humans are able to decipher characters quickly. But I want a few characters to get much more specific. Yoder and Oscar need something to happen before they are on the island. I would love to see everyone's day before the game starts. The moments or the hours or even a full 24 hours before it begins. That would give us the time we need to get a feel for the characters. I would relate it to the new Fallout TV show. We get a bit of a vibe from every character before the crap hits the fan. Except for Dr. Sorkin. She's a plot device. Leave her as she is. She's perfect. We don't need to see anything extra. In fact, the game shows us a bit where she helps out Jerry from a computer, and we hear her in Act 1 on the radio before we ever see her in Act 2 and 3. So, bless her. She's fantastic as she is. There's a pretty large discrepancy I want to iron out, though. The relationship between Jerry and Jesse. Now, I watched Beetlejuice recently, and my favorite part of the entire film is that the married couple had no issues with each other. They just loved each other, and they were going about this adventure together, and at no point were they ever arguing about how much they like or dislike each other. I don't mind a pair of characters who have no issues with each other. And this show, this game, does a good job of having two compatible characters getting along for the better part. Jessie is super subservient, and she does everything Jerry says up until that one moment when they needed the raptors to get into the main hallway. I have an issue with that. If you're going to put that there, we need to put it at the beginning. Personally, I don't want any contention at all. I think Jessie's an interesting point of view to have here. She's the youngest person, and she expresses that bit of childish energy that comes into any Jurassic Park film. Now, like I said, I have no issue with Sorkin as a character, but her and Jerry do butt heads about the Lysine contingency, which I love. Gotta keep that. Everything with Sorkin, keeping it. There's one moment in the game where you get split up. Yoder, Sorkin, and Jesse get separated from Jerry and Nima. And it's a really special moment because this is the first time Jerry and Jesse have been split up. They're gonna have to fend on their own for a moment. Jerry trying to get back to Jesse and Jesse trying to figure out what to do when her dad isn't there to protect her and tell her what to do. It ends instantly. It was a plot device for Nima and Jerry to have this heart-to-heart -heart talk. 
And it ends with a funny joke. A car that the T-Rex messed up earlier comes down the track, going to where they want to go, where Jesse is. I wish this had happened sooner. I wish this had happened immediately after Oscar's death. I hadn't mentioned it, but yes, Oscar dies. He fights raptors, which is so cool, and then he dies saving everybody, which is a nice little redemption arc for him because for some reason I think he was like a bad person. Nima keeps saying so, but then Nima was also holding child at gunpoint, so who's to say? But he redeems himself nonetheless to some degree. Very cool. After that, I really would have liked the characters to have their split up, fleeing in the tunnels from these super toxic mini raptors that when they bite you, you get paralyzed and they lay eggs in your chest. Sound familiar? They're really cool if they weren't so stupid looking. They're the most non-threatening threatening thing I've ever seen. And you know, besides maybe better gun training for the mercenaries, I wouldn't change anything else. I like it. And I love it, and yeah, I'm a bit nostalgic for it, and maybe it's the really silly deaths that Telltale gave these people. But I would give an entire piggy bank to see this remade in the style of The Quarry, or to be given a movie. I know it'll probably never happen, but what I can hope for is that maybe someone, one of you, will watch this video and decide that you too would like to play the game. It's also one of those spooky old games that you can't actually get anymore. So when you play it, it kind of feels like you're in a ghost town, witnessing something that shouldn't be witnessed anymore. Now the story does end with everyone getting off the island, that being Nima, Jerry, and Jesse, and they figure out that there's money on the boat to pay Nima, so her daughter does not have to die. Very cool. Very good ending. And thank you guys for watching. I'm the Crooked Caber. Subscribe if you want to, and see you next time. Ciao.